Bukham Abayim to the ninth and continuing series of lectures on the 13 principles of faith of Maimonides, that is the Yud Gimel Ikrim of the Rambam, which the Rambam sets forth in his Hakdamat to Perichelek as part of his Perish Mishnayas. Um, last time we began the seventh Ikka, which is out of Moshe Rabbeinu. And let's, I think it's worth it to read inside in the text too. This is the Sela Shvi. I'm reading from the text of Rabbi Shila, translated um, directly from the Arabic. Nevoas Moshe Rabbeinu. This is the seventh Ikah. V'hu la'amin shu'avien shalachol ha'neviyim. He's the father of all neviyim. Shalachol of shalachol. Those of you who came after, before him and after him. Kulam heng tachto b'madrego all neviyim alloa than Moshe Rabbeinu in terms of the level of prophecy. V'hu b'chir Hashem. He's the the choice of God, the choices of, of God, of Kodesh Baruch Hu, Mikola Min HaNoishi, from the entire human race. HaMasik B'men Yisala Yesi Mash Yisif Yasek Al Adam Shidim Tzavi Yishim Matzeh. Because Moshe Beno apprehended more, not only that anyone before had apprehended, but the Rambam's uh, position is Moshe Beno apprehended more than any person will ever apprehend, right, um, in the future. Vishu all of Hashem Hifli, B'salus, B'la Noishi, Sat Shisik, Vadera, Samalachis, Moshe Beno actually was able to transcend the, um, the human order until he reached the order of angels. He actually existed on the level of angels. He was not left a partition that he did not penetrate. There was nothing in his physical body which um, prevented him from doing so. By the way, this is a proof that Moshe Benner had a physical body. He had a body. He reached a high madrig, a high level. But he had a physical body. Not like those people want to interpret that according to certain people, he didn't have a physical body. But like, pa- uh, it's not important. But like, I mean, I mean, we don't have to, we don't have to explore the, the opinion of idiots. Yeah. No, I didn't have a body. <laughs> <laughs> In other words, according to the Rambam, the, what is unique about Moshe Rabbeinu, I mean, very unique about Moshe Rabbeinu, is the fact that he reached the highest level of intellect. And therefore, not only his, bodily, his physical body, but I would say his... Um, which means his imaginary faculties did not get in the way of his prophecy. In other words, all the prophets, according to the Rambam, um, possessed both a ra- used both the rational faculty and what's called the imaginary faculty. Right? And I would imagine the imaginary faculty is more connected with bodily functions than the rational faculty. According to the Rambam, uh, Moshe Rabbeinu's imaginary faculty did not get in the way of his rational apprehension. Okay. Therefore, he was able to speak to the Kosh without, um, without the intermediary, intermediary of angels. Now, in other words, so according to the Lama, Moshe Rabbeinu is the, the pinnacle of intellect, and this unique intellectual apprehension of Moshe Rabbeinu sets him apart from not, not anyone, anyone who came before him and after him, too. Okay, now. So, I really want to explain this incredible, I really want to explain this, this, you know, this topic, right, in detail. The Toyot Wanuli Pesuki Atera, to unlock the secrets of the, of the verses. Ulevai Inyan Pel Pe, to explain what the Torah says, Moshe Benes Devo was Pel Pe. Becholza Apostle, the entire verse. Zulosa Minyone, Lusharisi, Kalele Yon Dakimov, these are very subtle matters. And this will require a tremendous amount of, um, of expansion and introductions and metaphors. You have to explain actually the entire declension of intellects from a Kodesh Bochu, which are the Malachim, the intellects, the angels. And he says, he says, of course, something like this. Well, right? And he says, He says, even a hundred pages, right? Even a hundred pages, 
That would be enough. Levicha and Chela Mekoyim. He said, I'm going to leave it for its place. In the Sefer Perush Hadrosha, she added to the Chadroi. Because maybe I'm going to write a commentary on the on the Agadites. Drosha here means Agadites. Right? Or the Sefer Hadavua, Shachilo, Siboy. Maybe a book on prophets, which I've begun. Or the Sefer Perush, Elias said, I want to speak about these um, these foundations. Okay, now. Did he write those books? Ah, good question. The question is, did he write these books? Now. My opinion is, is that he did. Okay? Um, look, it could be it could possibly that he didn't write the books, but my opinion is that he did. I'm going to explain to you where I think he wrote the book. And this, this will help us understand, really, where the prophecy of Moshe Rabbeinu really fits into the Rambam. Okay, now, first of all, it's interesting that um, when he speaks about the prophecy of Moshe Rabbeinu, he said, to really explain it, we have to explain... All these societies. In other words, we have to explain barely, you know, the physical metaphysical ontology, beginning with God and the angels. We have to explain the different psukin, the different verses. We have to explain prophecy. We have to explain um, the right. We, we, I mean, basically, we have to explain everything. Now, what's interesting is, <coughs> is that the Rambam in the Mera Nevochem, which is in the section of prophecy, says something very, very interesting. We know that there's a, I, I might have, I actually referred to this before, we know that in the Mera Nevochem, there's a, several chapters in which the Rambam deals with prophecy. And the chapters begin with Perak Lamed Beis, second chapter of the second section, Right? In the Schwartz edition, which we've been using, it begins on page 373. And this section of prophecy goes, basically, basically goes to Perak Memhe, chapter 45. Although actually, um, the Rambam does speak about Nevoa um, in several chapters after that too. Now, so there's a section of Nevoa. So one could imagine that if the Rambam says over here, the safe on the Vua Shachilosi, but he's explained it in the Book of Prophecy, which I've begun. So I would imagine that in the Marina Vuchem, the Rambam would explain the prophecy of Moshe Beno in the section of the Vua. Because here, the Rambam has quite a number of chapters, 14, 15 chapters, which deal with prophecy. But what's interesting is, the Rambam says something very interesting in Perak Lamed Hay, chapter 35, of section 2. And this is on page 382 of the Schwartz edition. And he says like this. He says, I've already explained to everybody. That the four differences between the Vua Moshe Rabbeinu and the Vua of other Nevi'im. I've already explained that, right? Now where have you explained this? This is the Rambam. I've explained them in the Perish of Mishnah, which is our Perish of Mishnah. Um, I haven't read the four differences, but the Raman goes on and lists four differences between the prophecy of Moshe Benu and the prophecy of other prophets. Over Mishnah Torah. Also, the Rashi Mishnah Torah, the Raman actually, in Halacha Vav of Perim Zion, there also, too, the Raman devotes a discussion to the differences between the Vuh Moshe Benu and that of other prophets. Okay? Says the Rambam, ain't tzorech lachzo al zois ve ain't zois me matora sa seifer. Says the Rambam, I have to repeat this, and this is not the purpose of the seifer. I mean, that's the purpose of the seifer. What does Judaism with Abu Yishra be now? Ma she diach al yisha kol dav she oim al deis the vuah per seva who al deis suas and the vuah some she kol the vim she lefnei me she vim el bim acharam. In other words, everything that's been about prophecy in these chapters. Is going to be on the prophecy of those Deviyah, those prophets, who either before Moshe Rabbeinu or after Moshe Rabbeinu. The Elo Nevoth Moshe Rabbeinu. What about the prophecy of Moshe Rabbeinu? I mean, isn't that central to Judaism? It's one of your Ikrim. Now it's one of your Ikrim. You, you probably write more words in the seventh Ikrim than you wrote in all the Ikrim put together, right? Says the Rambam. Lo Echaches Bepokem Ela Ba'af Bino. I'm not going to mention even one word. I'm not gonna say say one word, not even explicitly or not even alludingly. Is that a word? No. Allu- allusion. 
I mean, I'm not going to use a lotion. I'm not going to to it. So we'll make up a word. Kiladaiti Hashem Novi Nema Almeisha V'azullah said B'sipur. Okay. Very interesting. Not one word I'm going to mention about Moshe Rabbeinu. So where is Moshe Rabbeinu? Where is he in the mind of Ulchem? In the end of theology, we spoke about the um, incorporeality of Kodesh Baruch Hu, and we mentioned that the Rambam explained the Psukim in Parashas Kisisa, what Moshe Rabbeinu was allowed to say, what he wasn't allowed to say. But the Nevoah Moshe Rabbeinu, why should Nevoah Moshe Rabbeinu not be in the mind of Ulchem? Hasn't the Rambam told us explicitly to explain the, the, the Nevoah Moshe Rabbeinu, what do I have to know? I have to know a tremendous expansion and introductions, right? And general ideas and Mishalim, the Mitzvahs of the Malachim, the order of the angels, the hierarchy of angels, and their the, the, the hierarchy from the, 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 the existence, the nature of angels, of intellects, the hierarchy from Kodesh Baruch Hu, the Nefesh and all the Koychos, the nature of the human being, right? I mean, I mean, what does he want to speak about? However, I want to, this is a big question. Where is Moshe Rabbeinu in the Megan of Ochem? Now, the fact is, the Ramam says I'm not going to speak one word about Moshe Rabbeinu in these chapters of Nevoa, and it's not true. It's not true. Why is it not true? Because, for example, the Ramam devotes Perak Labetes to a discussion between Moshe Rabbeinu and the other prophets, the other Nevi'ah. The Rambams, in making the claim that Moshe Rabbeinu is coming to reveal the law. Reveal the Torah is law, is halacha. Other Nevi'ah are not coming to reveal law. They're coming to um, the Mashkichim. They're coming to, in fact, um, encourage us, or warn us, or, in fact, on, on, on the Nevoa, but to listen to the Nevoa Moshe Rabbeinu, was the other Nevoa are coming, says the Rambam, right, um, just to tell us, about the, tell us, to strengthen our belief in, and, and our commitment to the to the Nevoa Moshe Rabbeinu. What is Moshe Rabbeinu coming? Moshe Rabbeinu is coming to present to us the most balanced person, reasonable balanced person. Ram brings Chukum Ishpat and Tzadikim. Says Rambam, what is Tzadikim? Balanced. Muzanib, says the Rambam. And now in Paraklam at the very end of page 395 of the Swatch edition, that a person should not go to the two extremes of the Ziris, right, of self-flagellation, and also to a person shouldn't go to the other extreme of self-indulgence. Right? But rather a person should seek somehow what's the most reasonable, which the Rambam says to be the middle path. Okay? And this is really what Moshe Rabbeinu is coming to reveal to us. Now, so, the Rambam does discuss Moshe Rabbeinu in Paraglamites. And not only in allusion and one word, but actually discusses in that sense, what the Nevoah Moshe Rabbeinu is coming to do. But in addition to that, the Rambam does speak about the Nevoah Moshe Rabbeinu at the end of um, Perak Memhe, chapter 45, page 416 in the Schwartz edition. And he speaks about Pe'al Pe'adab boy, right? That the Nevoah Moshe Rabbeinu was a Nevoah that uses only the rational intake, the Koyach Amadabe, or not the Koyach Amadames, as uh, Professor Schwartz translates it. And there's an entire paragraph there about Moshe Rabbeinu. So, for sure, the Rambam does mention a word or two about Moshe Rabbeinu. And, in fact, actually, um, in other words, we get an idea of what the word Moshe Rabbeinu is in contradiction of the Nevi'im. However, what I'd like to do is, I'd like to go to the introduction of the Rambam to the Mary Nevochim. Okay? Now, first of all, right, the Rambam 
right, is coming, what is the purpose of the guide, of the, of the Murder of the Rambam? So, the Rambam tells us, right, that, um, Um, the Rambam speaks about the murder of Uchem is coming to tell us the um, yeah, let me uh, let me one second over here um, first of all the Rambam speaks about that the Sefer is coming to Explain us psukim, um, you know, scripture of the Deen, and say the prophets. Okay? But then the Ram goes on and says, right? That, um, the Sefer is going to tell us the, just the, what we translate the, the true signs of the law. Okay, that's what the Rambam says. Right? And the Rambam says, in the Omesh, you save the Messiah called Koshal Maven Oisa, it's not going to take away every, every difficulty. Right? Okay. But nonetheless, I'm on page 11. But he says, Yathem Batulachol Seichel Chacham, right? He goes on, he's basically about Maisa Bracious, Maisa Bakova. The advice of Bracious is Chokhmas HaTeva, says the Rambam, which is the, the, um, the you know, natural wisdom, natural philosophy. And my cover is um, metaphysics, Chokhmas Lokis. So the Rambam says he's going to say things only if he's not going to, now, he's not going to, he's going to hide these things. Only say them in the Prokem, he's going to allude to them in chapter headings, says the Rambam. It goes on, finds the purpose of the Mori Nevuchem. Okay? He speaks about what the heck, what, you know, he speaks about, now he says like this, he goes on this like this. He speaks about my sabreshes, my samokava, my sabreshes, Chazal say, that you can only, you can't, you know, you can't teach it to a lot of people, right? Okay? Al tal shev shal say this, hakadim na el yodim atatliz of a sefer lachami itano, ela pami ma emes, okay, don't think that, al tal shev, don't think, shal say this, hakadim na el yodim, these secrets. Right? You do him at Tachlisim Vesefim Echad Mita. Don't think that everything, everyone knows all the secrets from the beginning to the end. Elapam and Ma'emes, Mavikim Lano Ach Anu Choshim Oisam Lo Oharya. Sometimes these secrets somehow illuminate us. So somehow we think that they're the light of the day. Achreik and Achoim Rahagilim Choshim Mustaim Oisam Ach Anu Choshim Lo Oharya. But then there's an illumination, it's like a lightning. And then the darkness of the physical world sets in again. Right? It's like a person in the middle of the night, says the Rambam. And the lightning flashes. You know, once, twice, a few times a night. I'm on page 13. Sometimes the lightning flashes so often, so a person feels he's in a... a um, a non-ceasing, right? Um, illumination. That the night turns into the daytime. Who's this person that the lightning flashes so often that he feels he's in the daytime? Zui Dagas This is the highest level of the via, and which is said about him. That's my Shabbeinu. Yesh benem shivit loy abarak pamachat b'chol leiloy, etc., etc. Now, what? The Rambam is speaking about the secrets of the Torah. Part of which he wants to, he's going to reveal a little bit in the Bible of Uchem. And who is the person, right, for whom the lightning flashes? To the point where the night lights up, that's all other than Moshe Rabbeinu. Interesting. Interesting. So, it would come out that the purpose 
of the Meirin Nevuchen, according to the Rambam, is coming to reveal al in the heaven way, certainly, a knowledge, an understanding of the world, which is characterized by the Navua of Moshe Rabbeinu. That's clear from the introduction of the Rambam. Now, what's interesting is, what's interesting is, is that this theme pops up several times within the Mergen of Ocha. Now, for example, I mentioned before that at the end, in Perak Lamites, in chapter 39 of the second section, the Rambam says that the purpose of the Nevoah of Moshe Rabbeinu is to present us, to reveal to us, right, what the Rambam says, Hamezik Amuzan Shusia Izun Shib Oisimin. The most perfect balance of the human species, of the human race. That's what the Nevoah of Moshe Rabbeinu has come to tell us. Right? Anything which deviates from this perfect mean, right? Says the Rambam is either insufficient or exaggerated. So this Torah, this Torah it says, And so the Rambam, you know, Tzadikim perusha muzanim. Tzadikim is muzanim, balanced. Kihem avodi she'en bem Torah fagzama. The Torah entails on us a worship of God, which is not exaggerated. It doesn't weigh down on a person. Kamohan azilus, like those who separate themselves, right? When the didas is like fun and people who torture themselves, simply such as self-flagellation. For is fakers are gorgeous, are tigers, are tobaccos, are shashlevers, are nurses, nipka, mirrors, are yuna, or for the people who, who actually go overboard in their lust for the world. Kasher the dabe basefes al tamei a mitzvahs. Now it says the Rambam when we speak about in this book on the tamei a mitzvahs, which is already in the third section. Yisbar lechab yizunan v'chokmosan masheroi lo yisbar. It will be explained to you this balance, this wisdom. That which is fitting to explain concerning these topics. And therefore it says, In other words, the Nebuah Moshe Rabbeinu is coming to reveal to us the most balanced way in which a person should conduct himself. And the Rambam is identifying the most balanced ethic with the wisest. In other words, the, that ethic which is closer, which is on the highest level, has achieved the highest level of wisdom, of Chachma. Now, what's interesting is, is the Rabbam, as he tells us in chapter 39, right, actually comes back to this theme in the Tamei HaMitzvahs. So, for example, in chapter 25 of section 3 of the Tamei HaMitzvahs, the Rambam explains the fact that when a Kaddish Baal, anything a Kaddish Baal who does, right, the Rambam here on, on page 5 to 10, chapter 25, section 3, Perach Tafei Chele Gemel, right, and the Rambam, right, um, right, in other words, a Kaddish Baal who does in accordance with his wisdom, Right? The Bukharbah only does something which is possible, and that which is possible is defined by his wisdom. Right? There's no there's no um there's no divide. Nothing predicates Bahu to create something, do something which represents the ultimate good. Zui Das Ben Torah, this is the opinion of Harry Ben Torah, and also the opinion of the philosophers. Khain Das Philosopher. Khain Datenu Anu, it's our opinion too. Even though we believe the world is created ex nihilo, 
כל הבנים חכמינו אינם מאמינים שזה בחפש בלבד. But crazy thing doesn't mean that Kadosh Baruch just did something by pure will. אלא הם מאמינים שחוכמות זו יש אללה, אבל הם חושבים שזה היה גדול גדול גדול, אשר אין לנו מסכים בעצם, שאנחנו לא יכולים להפריד, חי ואס מציע זו אין למזל בשלימות זו בהכרח בשעה שבא לידי מציע. זאת אומרת, בעצם, העולם היה גדול לקורנס עם גדול גדול. ואוי שחוק בעט ואין למשתנה חי ואס העדר לפני שאין להם מביא לידי מציע. זאת אומרת, כל הזמן היה גדול 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 We can't say that the world was created as evil just from a, a quirk of God, but it's dictated according to God's wisdom. And the Rabbim brings verses on this. Okay? I've seen the word before, that doesn't really apply. Okay. Ah, 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 ah. There's, a, there's, a, there's a, a, an interesting contradiction here. Is the world eternal? Is not eternal? We'll, we spoke about that already, but we'll speak a little bit again. Okay? כבר דעת לך, speaking towards the end, at the end of, towards the last paragraph on page 511. אסדס תרסינו בעניין זה, ושהיא אשר בוחרת להם. This is the opinion of our, of our Lord, the opinion of the Torah, and this is what every person has to believe in. שכן אין אבסורד באומרנו שמציאות ואדום שכל בית ישראל טועים אס חוכמו סיסאללה. There's nothing absurd by saying that all of creation, right, is, in, is, is, um, is commensable with his great wisdom. Here's with the capital H. Even though we don't know much, we don't, you know, we're not, we don't have to have all this wisdom, but for sure, the world and everything in the world, right, is the cause of this wisdom. The Torah of Moshe Rabbeinu, the entire Torah of Moshe Rabbeinu, is built on this premise that every Act, which includes every command of God, has a basis in the reason of a color, in, in reason. And that's what it says, And the Ramah says, Yeah, that's what it says, <clears throat> which is the entire Torah of Teres Meshur, the foundation of Teres Meshur Beinu, it is based upon the intellect of God. And the intellect of God appears to, I mean, to be manifested in two, in two aspects. One is ethics and Ethics on the highest level would be what we call balanced. This is the Rambam explains in chapter 39 of section 2. And of course, ontology, the, you know, the, the logic and wisdom with which Kodesh Baal created the world. The reflection of this, as we've discussed in the earlier principles, is the way in which man comes to understand Kodesh Baal. Now, what's interesting is, is that the Rambam The, the Rabbi goes on to speak about this again in chapter 27 of section 3, which is page 516, 5, 5, 517. The Rabbi says, kol shnei The purpose of the Torah is two things. The Torah is coming to rectify both man's soul, the spiritual aspect, and this physical aspect. Aspect, the Kudos Aguf. Okay, and the Rabbin speaks about ethics, etc., <laughs> etc. Et and then Rabbin speaks about Shlemus, the person Shlemus and his beliefs, right? His intellect. And goes to the Rabbin and says, this is on page 517, the third paragraph, the short edition again. Lachena Torah Mises, the true Torah, as should be Anushi Achas being built, which you explain that it is unique. He be he Torahs Moshe Rabbeinu. That is the Torahs Moshe Rabbeinu. Ba Rak the Lamed Asano is coming to teach us Shnei Hashlemius Gam Yacha to teach these two perfections at this together. Kolayim, let us say, Tekinas Matzavim Bnei Adam Elu Im Elu. Basically, the ethics of society. Okay, and then he says, and through. 
these good midas, right? Right? That every person can reach the first shleim, is the first perfection, which is amunus amatan deyas nechayinus, proper philosophy, proper beliefs. Vishabayim tuzak ha-shleim is ha In other words, the church is coming, church is coming to teach us both ethics and both ontology, beliefs and morals. And this is the unique property of the Torah, of Torah's Meishu Rabbeinu, because it's based upon the intellect of God, which was the basis for God's creation of the world. So in other words, we see clearly that the intellectual perfection of Moshe Rabbeinu, and I was about that to an ethical perfection too, right, was vital for what? Was vital for the, um, the Moshe Rabbeinu is the person who reveals the Torah, who, 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 who reveals the Torah, who reveals Kodesh Baruch Torah. No one else can do that. No other Nevi can do that. Because every other Navi has an admixture of what's called the, um, the imaginative intellect, which is Chaitzit, which comes to divide between the intellect of HaKadosh Baruch, the intellect which man can apprehend of God, right? And between, you know, a person's more physical needs, which come to, you know, which come to distort that. So in other words, we see over here, but very, very interesting is, now, goes on the Rambam and explains that all the mitzvahs have, I mean, the Rambam's famous shita, you can listen to our lectures on shkafashakal.com. The Rambam's famous opinion is that all the mitzvahs have a reason behind them. And this is and this is a property of acts of God, which God acts only in accordance with his reason. The Rambam actually bases his Tamiya mitzvahs on this principle that God acts with reason. God doesn't create with a quirk, kivyachal. But he creates on the basis of his reasoning. So now, what we have is very interesting. What is the Meir Nebuchad? The Meir Nebuchad is none other but the Ramu's understanding of the Vos Meishah Rabbeinu. The Vos Meishah is coming to explain to us the basis of both Jewish ethics and Jewish belief. The basis of Meishah Bereish is Meishah Mekavah the basis of the creation of the world and the basis of the the, the structure of, of metaphysics. That is the Mahan Avuchim, according to the Rambam. The Mahan Avuchim is the Rambam's rendition of what he understood to be, in his terms, the message or the import of Moshe Rabbeinu's prophecy. So, if we look and all the things the Rambam speaks about here. He speaks about Hadamas Mishalem, introductions, which means, Rambam calls Hadamas means, you know, axioms, Mishalem, the metaphors the Rambam speaks about in the first section of the book, he speaks about Mishalem with the Nevi'im, the Mitzias Hamalachim, the Madrekas of the angels, the intellects, right? Um, right? Nevoah, the Yisaitis, all these things are in the mind of Uchim, but all these things are part and parcel of Nevoah's Moshe Rabbeinu. But because they constitute the wisdom and ethic which is being communicated by the Torah, based upon the axiom that at the basis of this ethic and this knowledge is the wisdom of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and it's only the, 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 the intellect of Moshe Rabbeinu which is able to apprehend this and to reveal this to the world. So, yeah. So when he says in 35, I won't speak about these chapters. He doesn't have to do because it's, it's all Moshe everything, Everything's Moshe Rabbeinu. Everything's Moshe Rabbeinu. That's what he says, not even one word. Because he doesn't have to. On the contrary, the chapters and prophecy are coming to t- distinguish between that and so the rest of the same. Right. What's the number I'm saying? Now, what's interesting is, what's interesting is, and you know, I think this is important, is that this is in fact actually um, the basis, 
not only is this, this not only is this in fact actually the basis of um, or the basis of the entire Torah, but this actually was the Rambam's understanding of the Vuzmash Rabbeinu. The Vuzmash Rabbeinu encompassed not only the intellect which, and the wisdom which lies at the basis of the, of the laws of the Torah, right? But also, in fact, lies at the basis of our understanding of the entire ontology of the world and its ethical content. So Adam speaks about that in his sections of Negative Theology, which is actually expressed in Pashas Kisisa, Mitzvah this week. Adam, we spoke about this already. Now, just to say that the Rambam actually makes this much clearer at the end of the Mayan of Uchim too. And the Rambam concludes the Mayan of Uchim with chapter 54 in section 3, Perk Nun Dalet Chelek Gimel, which begins on page 670 in the Schwartz edition. And then the Rambam speaks about Chachma, wisdom. The concept of wisdom. And of course, the Rambam mentions, right, that knowledge of the Torah and wisdom, right, he speaks about these two concepts, and he says, they said on Moshe Rabbeinu, he's al b'chachma, al b'tera, al b'neviyam. Okay? So he speaks on Moshe Rabbeinu. And then, the Ramu speaks about levels of perfection, different levels of perfection. And of course, the fir- fourth level of perfection, says the Rambam, is intellectual perfection, this is on page 673, right? With the word, the third level of perfection is perfection in most of the mitzvahs. The second level of perfection is, is bodily perfection, right? The first level of perfection is Financial perfection, if that means anything. The fourth love makes the natural perfection. Okay? And of course, the Rambam has already told me that Moshe Beno, which is, we see this here in the, in the Ikhlin, represents the highest level of intellectual perfection. And of course, Moshe Beno, um, said Moshe Beno is called Abba Chachma, Patera, Abba Nevi'a. What's interesting is, after the Rambam lists all these four levels of perfection, he speaks about another level of perfection. He doesn't call it level of perfection. Another type of perfection. And that's imitating God. Imitating the Kodesh Baruch He speaks about the Pasuk, or the Anas Drachecha. Pasuk we spoke about. Which Moshe Rabbeinu learns to imitate a Kodesh Baruch He speaks about Chesel Mishpat, the Stalk of Oretz, the Shesha Semites. Okay? This is the Shlema Adam. This is the highest... Perfection of man. This is the highest perfection a person a person can glorify in. Mishia Gila Sigas Akelius Allah Kefiya Cholto. Whoever can uh uh so the Ram says, Hatal Shit see in the Pasik said that the Pasik says Kyaniya Shem Isa Khesan Mishpur Stokaba Oretz Right? Right? Kiba Ela Khafati no Mashem He says Hatal Shit see in the Pasik said the purpose is supposed to talk about in this pasuk. He ate for shuhivi or shleimas adam. This is coming to clarify. He ate for shuhivi or shleimas adam that the perfection of man should buy his parba emes that a person can really glorify. Actually, the pasuk speaking about actually is a pasuk before this. Kliyam Hashem al yis halachot bechokbasoi. The Ram explains this is a person who's reached the level, all these levels of God beyond Chachma, Ashus, Gevua, which is the three levels of perfection. What's Haskada Oisi is this level of perfection a person imitates God ethically. He, Madrega, this, what is this Madrega? Shall me she gia la hasik as akelius alakafi yacholto is the madriga of the person who reached to apprehend the Kodesh Bohu kifi yacholto. 
He was able to reach the highest the level in which he understands the Kosh of Shkoch and the entire Bria. Who is that? It's Moshe Rabbeinu. It's Moshe Rabbeinu. What's the purpose of the Bar of Vuchim? Is to bring us the level of Moshe Rabbeinu. Okay. The Rambam concludes the he begins with Moshe Rabbeinu, speaking about the light thing, and he concludes the Moshe with the Moshe Rabbeinu. The Moshe is Moshe Rabbeinu. That's what it is. The the the, the is the vision, the apprehension of Moshe Rabbeinu. But isn't it impossible for anyone to reach that? Level? No, no one can ever reach that. By the words. Every person, in other words, <laughs> right, right, no, has to show them. I mean, you know, we're not saying much, the rabbi, the, rabbi, the, rabbi, the rabbi would have to be a kaifa. The rabbi is claiming no one can reach it, but I'm yeah, saying it is. Tzaddik. But just tzaddik. I mean, he's balanced. The ethical level. Uh, tzaddik, maybe ethical. Maybe ethical. He can't be the chachma, but Shabbat. Yeah. That's sad. Very one sad. You can't be Moshe Rabbeinu. You can't sit in yeshiva and learn twenty years and come Moshe Rabbeinu. Not Sarah. You could, but I don't think so. You can't be Moshe Rabbeinu. It's impossible. It's what the Ikar of the Rambam. No one can ever lead the Ikar of the Rambam from Moshe Rabbeinu. So where does the the more Buchan get me to? The more Buchan gets you to the the the, 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 the greatest level that a person could possibly reach according to his yachodes, according to his possibility. But there's no question about it. The Moshe Rabbeinu is coming to point me in the direction of of the understanding. Of Moshe Rabbeinu of the Torah, which is this level of intellect and ethics, which constitutes the revelation of the Torah. Yeah, I mean, this understanding of the purpose of the Marin of Vuchim yeah. is presumably not shared by most of the Jewish world who is not interested in learning the Marin of Vuchim, <laughs> or they just, or they just don't understand what the Marin of Vuchim is for. The important thing is it was shared by by the Rambam. <laughs> There's no question about it, right? It was about it. They, I mean, look, is, it is it just that they they agree with this, but just don't agree what he says? Or they just don't I, agree this is we read those? I haven't polled people. Most people have never learned the Marin of Vuchim. Most people have a lot to say about the Marin of Vuchim without having learned it. <laughs> which, is, um, which is usually typical of people who don't like books. I find that most people who don't like books never read them. Who learn some books never read them. But in any case, um, in my opinion, is this is rather the Rambam's... I think this is the book the Rambam says he was going to write, and he wrote it. However, so why did the Rambam say I'm going to write a book? Say I wrote the book. No. This is the secret message of the Bayer of Ochem. The Rambam hid it. He said, I'm going to write a book if I get the chance. He wrote the book. Why do I say he wrote the book? Maybe he didn't write the book. The answer is that we know that the Rambam was constantly correcting his Perush of Mishnayis. In fact, actually, in the Masoid Haraviv, you know, that the Rambam was constantly editing his Perush of Mishnayis. And I, I, I presume by then he had written most of the Merod of Ochem. the entire point. The secret message of the Merod of Ochem, I'm telling Ashkafa Sarkodakam, you know, you're the, you're the first ones to know this, is communicating to us Ke'en, the Nevoah of Moshe Rabbeinu, but then, as the Rambam understood it from his understanding of the Torah, like he says, no one can understand it completely. But the person who understood it completely was Moshe Rabbeinu. And for us, the few flashes are good enough. Of course, the few flashes, the few flashes of the Marina Bukham too. But when the Rambam says, I'm going to, I'm going to write a book about it, I'm planning on writing a book about it, he wrote it. But like every other of the deepest, um, you know, Message of the Marin of Ochem, there's not, I'm sure there's not the very people who actually picked it up in the Rambam. But that's what I'm saying. That's my claim. Okay, so we see how central is the, is the divorce of Moshe Rabbeinu, Christ of Moshe Rabbeinu, in the Yikran. Now, I want to just go on, and I want to speak a little bit about this, if I could, because the divorce of Moshe Rabbeinu is quite central. And what do we mean by intellect? Now, what's interesting is that the Rambam lists four differences between the Vod of Moshe Rabbeinu and the Vod of other prophets. Okay, let's go through very, very quickly. <coughs> the Rambam says that every Navi speaks to a Kodesh Baruch through an intermediate. And I'm sorry. And Moshe Rabbeinu speaks directly. 
correctly, whatever that means. This means he's not connected with the active intellect. He's connecting beyond the active intellect. I don't know. Yeah. I, I mean, it must mean that, doesn't it? We said last week the active intellect was, a, it was like a malach. It was an intermediary on some level. Right, okay, fine. Fine. No, I, I'm not... You know, so what's the mechanism? So he's the I don't know. He's mechanism. Of I don't. I don't know. I don't. I, don't, I, don't, I, I I'll tell you. My, I think. I don't think we're possible of comprehending this. But I want to use a working understanding of it, like I before. But well, this is quite important. It's not just. I don't know. No, I know. It's I know. Not just qualitative. I agree. Quantitative. With you. It's entirely I, qualitative. I agree with you. I agree with you. I want to read through them. We're going to speak about it. Okay. So, for example, without an, an intermediate, like it says, pal, pal, a double boy. I mean, you can't say Moshe Rabbeinu saw God. Because you can't see all the other machayim. The Rambam already told us that. So what does it mean? There has to be some of an intermediate. What is the intermediate? We'll speak about this, okay? Now, second difference is another he sees in the dream, either a dream, a daydream, where Shabbat was fully conscious. Okay, in the end of Yom Hashem, the Viachem and Hashem Baba Elav as Vada, but Chalav Adam Aboy Lo Yichayin Abdi Moshe. So, okay, the third difference is when a Malach receives his prophecy, when, I'm sorry, when a Nabi receives his prophecy, he's shaking, he's under fear, he's under control of himself. Where should have this cool, calm, and collected? Okay. And the fourth difference is, is that the Navi can only access the void at certain times when a Kosh Bokhu was. Where should have any time? Okay, now, once again, I can't picture these things. I don't think anyone can picture these things. I don't think anyone can comprehend these things. But what does it mean? What are these four differences? What do they mean? My opinion is, these four differences mean, Moshe's Nebuah constitutes an act of thinking, of analytic thinking. In other words... If there's an emsai, which means there's a vision, which I have to interpret, I don't really understand the thing intellectually, or I'm dreaming, or daydreaming, <laughs> I'm not fully conscious, or I'm shaking, I'm not in control of myself, or, you know, I can't get it any time, that means I'm, ne- I'm not really exercising my intellect, right, in a proper fashion. In other words, when a person understands something, he has to be totally in control of himself. Right? If you're learning a black gamala and you're half asleep, or you're, you're shaking, and you're not in control of yourself, you're tittering, or you have to ask your friend for a shot, the emsoi, or, like, you're, you're praying for siyat to the shabaya, and you can't get it now, and you forgot it, and you're praying that it should come to you. That's not called learning. That's not called learning. You're not, you're, you're not fully in control of it. Measure man, it was a spitz He was in control of himself. In other words, Measure Beno's Levoa consisted of an act of intellectual understanding, fully conscious, full of control of himself. Not under any overbearing fright or fear. And understanding the thing precisely and clearly in and of itself, with his, all his intellectual faculties. The Rambam is basically describing how a person understands something, intellectually. Not being swayed by emotion and by fright. Was he tuned into some kind of you're looking, you're looking for a metaphysical thing. We're going to get to this. We're going to get to this. You see, I think we try to close our eyes and picture the I want. To, I want to picture it like that. But it's, an act, it's, an act, it's, a, it's an act of learning. But last time we had all these mashalim about overflowing spring and that's this. The, that's for the other Nevi. I understand. That's for the other Nevi. I understand. But I'm saying, what I'm trying to say is the entire mechanism that's of Moshe Rabbein is totally yeah, different. Totally, totally different. In fact, the Rambam even says that you can't even speak about them as being the... the, the, the in fact, it's not even Nevoa. The Rambam is really called both the Nevoah because then we have another word. But really, it's not the Nevoah, it's the Nevoah. Moshe Ben, the Rambam says, the Rambam says, in, I think in, in Parak Lamed Hay, in Chedek Beis, that you can't even call them both Nevoah. But the same, we call them by the same name, but the same name is meaningless. It has nothing to do with, it has nothing to do with that. Now, what does this 
mean that Moshe Rabbeinu is in totally control? It's an incredible thing. Totally in control. He's learning. Like, learning the Gemara, but totally in control. So, it turns out that, like I said before, there's nothing to imagine. Because we try to imagine anything, we're going to imagine it. I mean, no one, can, no one can come to that level. But functionally, we have to understand that Moshe Rabbeinu is applying his intellect, just like anyone applies his intellect, except that he was on an intellectual level that was higher than any other person. Way higher than any other person will be or will not be. Or will have, was or will ever be. But what the Rambam is describing here is is the uses of a person's intellect where it's not being forced or being interfered with any imaginative or physical um, noise. Clear thinking. And that's why the Rambam has to posit Moshe Rabbeinu on a high level of seichel. Moshe Rabbeinu just said zitzabah as most people imagine to be, that the Ram is going to say that too. The Ram is going to say that Moshe Rabbeinu in the eighth principle is going to say, he's called the Mechoikik, he's Madregas Seifer, a scribe. Madregas Seifer, Shekoyim Loi, that you, they call, they, they, they read to him, who Kaisev Kul, he writes it down. So people think Moshe Rabbeinu says, it's a book, he's a stenographer, a secretary, so I can write it down. So what does it mean for this great intellect? This is a fundamental contradiction. Not only you give an ikrim, but a contradiction in the whole concept of Torah of Moshe Rabbeinu. Okay. We're going to address that in Mitzvah Shem next time. Okay? Until then, from an undisclosed place, to Shlaim Kodesh, everybody should have a good week. I could